I have stood upon starved rock and gazed for hours upon the beautiful landscape spread out before me. The undulating plains, fresh and green, the rounded hills beyond clad in their forest livery, the gentle stream pursuing its noiseless way to the Mississippi and the Gulf, all in harmonious association, make up a picture over which the eye delights to linger. And when to these are added recollections of the heroic adventurers who first occupied it, that here the banner of France so many years floated freely in the winds, the most intense and varied emotions cannot fail to be awakened. These words first appeared in an early edition of the History of Illinois. Yet they resonate in the hearts and minds of nearly everyone who has stood atop the rock. The solitary sandstone cliff at the bend of the Illinois River. Your own time at Starved Rock may stretch over a few hours or days. What you will see? The rock and the surrounding canyons and bluffs are part of a natural phenomenon beginning hundreds of millions of years ago. Much of the land we now call Illinois was covered by a shallow inland sea as long as 425 million years ago. Wind, water, heat, and cold eroded the surrounding land masses. Weathered bits of rock washed into the Ordovician Sea and were deposited as layers of sand, one layer upon another until the bottom layers under tremendous pressure, cemented together. Geologists call this St. Peter's Sandstone. Since then, massive glaciers pushing down from the northern latitudes have covered this area several times. They carried layers of soil and rock with them as they advanced. Periodically, the glaciers retreated, leaving behind walls of debris called end moraines. The last glacier to advance over this parkland arrived and departed more than 10,000 years ago. When this glacier retreated, the end moraines holding huge lakes of glacial meltwater collapsed in an event called the Kankakee Torrent. A deluge of water blasted out the Illinois River Channel. The Kankakee Torrent was so powerful and cut the Illinois River Channel so deeply that the surrounding tributary streams were left at much higher elevations than the river itself. Over time, the streams eroded the soft sandstone into deep canyons on their journey to join the river. Living reminders of those colder times are the white pines and white cedar trees whose seeds were brought south by the glaciers. White cedars and red cedar trees are found throughout Starved Rock and Matheson State Parks. There is archaeological evidence that humans migrated to this area up to 10,000 years ago. Early Native Americans would have found abundant food resources and a moderate climate. These conditions continued over thousands of years to present times. The Kaskaskia tribe were one of the six related tribes known collectively as the Illiniwek. Their seasonal village of up to 7,000 inhabitants flourished in the 1600s along the bank of the Illinois River, across from the current park. Lush vegetation supported populations of bison, elk, black bear, deer, cougar, and gray wolf. The river teemed with fish, turtles, ducks, and geese. The first known Europeans to land here arrived in 1673. A small group of French explorers led by Louis Joliet, a cartographer, and Père Jacques Marquette, a Jesuit missionary, were returning up the Illinois River to the Great Lakes. Going ashore on the north bank of the river about a mile east of Starved Rock, they were greeted by the members of the great village of the Kaskaskia. We had never seen anything like this river, wrote Marquette in his journal. 
for the richness of the soil, the prairies and woods, the buffaloes, the elks, the deer, the wild cats, the bustard, the wild geese, the parakeets, and even the beavers. Père Marquette returned two years later to the village of the Kaskaskia and established the mission of the Immaculate Conception, Illinois' first Christian mission. Several years later, René Robert Cavalier Sour de la Salle and his lieutenant Henri de Tonti claimed the entire Mississippi Valley for France. They built Fort St. Louis atop Starved Rock in the winter of 1682 83. They chose this location because of its strategic position above the last rapids on the Illinois River. With Fort St. Louis, the French controlled the main passage from Canada to the south. The Illinois settled in great numbers near the fort, trading furs to the French voyageurs for trade goods from the French Canadian provinces. However, by 1691, the confederacy between the French and the Illinois had fallen apart. Natural resources around the fort were depleted and the Native American population was declining. The French abandoned the fort shortly thereafter. Fort St. Louis continued to shelter trappers and traders until it was reportedly destroyed by fire. All remains had disappeared by 1720. The 125-foot sandstone bluff was a landmark located high above the surrounding countryside. From this vantage point, the legend of how Starved Rock got its name has passed from generation to generation. In 1769, Chief Pontiac of the Ottawa tribe was allegedly slain by an Illinois while on a trading trip to Kaskaskia in southern Illinois. Seeking revenge, an allied tribe, the Potawatomi, attacked a band of Illinois. Legend has it that the Illinois retreated to the top of the sandstone bluff. The Potawatomi surrounded the bluff and set siege to the Illinois, trapping them in their own refuge. The Illinois supposedly died of starvation, and the site became known as Starved Rock. The Northwest Territory, which included Illinois, passed from French rule to that of the United States government. In 1835, Daniel F. Hitt bought Starved Rock, thinking it might be a valuable location along the planned route of the I&M Canal. In February of 1890, Hitt sold the land to Ferdinand Walther, who envisioned a Gibraltar of the West. A large hotel was built to the west of Starved Rock. There was an artesian-fed swimming pool, a dance pavilion, and concessions. Trolley trips for tired travelers through corn and clover the whole state over. All aboard! To get there, visitors would board a train in Chicago, transfer to the Interurban Railway in Joliet, and travel west through the countryside. Park visitors then took a ferry boat across the river to the Starved Rock Resort. When they arrived, they could enjoy the resort's natural beauty by day and a big city dance club at night, featuring musical legends like Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, and Perry Como. The state of Illinois purchased 290 acres including Starved Rock and adjacent land from the Walthers in 1911 for $146,000. It became one of the first state parks, soon to be enjoyed by visitors from far and wide. In its first year of free admission, attendance tripled from 25,000 to an amazing 75,000 visitors. During the 1930s, the park quadrupled in size. Concurrently, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt inaugurated a work program in response to the millions left unemployed by the Great Depression. 
christened the Civilian Conservation Corps, young jobless men joined by the thousands. It was these young men who were responsible for most of the early development of Starved Rock State Park. If you talk to a hundred people, there was lucky two out of a hundred that had a job. Around here, the West Clocks was the only one that would employ, but they were only paying like, uh, uh, oh, 15, 20 cents an hour. So you were better off going to the CCs. Assigned to public works projects, CCC recruits were fed, clothed, and housed at government expense. They received medical attention, education, and job training. They worked from sun up to sundown and got paid $30 a month. $25 were sent home to their families, and $5 were paid directly to recruits. Illinois was one of the first states to use the CCC in their state parks, and Starved Rock had one of the first companies in residence. Company 1609 was assigned to Starve Rock State Park on December 15, 1933. Two others, 614 and 2601, followed. We made a lot of friends. And uh, our company uh, right in Starve Rock, there, 2601, we had people from all over the state of Illinois. Work crews were divided into foresters, rock cutters, and carpenters. They cut trails, built shelters and bridges, and planted trees. I was one of the guys that got straightened out when I, when I went into the sea. It, it was, a, I mean, discipline was um, high on the, on the list in, in the CC camp. We worked hard, but we learned a lot. We learned how to cut stone. Down here at 2601, where the, where the lodge was built. Dedicated on May 4, 1941, the Starved Rock Lodge is just one example of their fine workmanship that can be appreciated today. The CCC officially disbanded in 1942. Thousands of former CCC members joined the military to fight in World War II. To a man, they took the values, skills, and discipline they learned in the Civilian Conservation Corps to make better lives for themselves, their families, and a grateful country. Every year, thousands of visitors walk in the footsteps of those who have gazed from the heights of the rock. Below them, the Illinois River continues to flow through the Starved Rock Lock and Dam. We welcome you to Starved Rock and Matheson State Parks. Help us to preserve this land as we provide for your outdoor recreation. As we appreciate the natural beauty of this Illinois landmark, we share the experience of it with those who stood before and preserve it for those who will come after us. In the words of Nathaniel Hawthorne, time flies over us, but leaves its shadow behind. We hope you enjoy your time here 